<laughs> so uh, thanks everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Michael Collins. Um, I've been in information security for about 23 years now. I'm kind of dating myself. Um, most of that doing ethical hacking type things, um, but we're not really here to talk about me necessarily. We are here to uh, talk about something that's concerning to all of us, which is evil chickens. Um, so uh, to kind of to kind of set this up a little bit, I uh, um, I was always a suburban guy. I moved out to the country, got chickens. You know, I uh, was trying to country find myself a little bit, and uh, everything seemed fine. And then I noticed that my chickens had actually propped up a wireless access point. Um, in my defense. Uh, I completely underestimated their capabilities. Um, I had run power out to there, so you know I, I do take some of the responsibility for what happened. But um, you know I, I need to find out what the chickens are up to. Of course, you know um, uh, I only have female chickens. You know maybe they're just looking at salacious pictures of roosters. I don't I don't know what's going on, but. Um, but definitely, definitely need to figure it out. So, uh, you know, as as a hacker, you know, we we tend to over engineer everything. You know, I, I initially thought of like a long range antenna, you know, to do things. But wireless hacking tends to be very kind of proximity based. So, um, what I decided on was a, a drone. And actually, I have it up here. If if you guys want to peep it after the talk and things, I promise I'm not going to fly it. I did I did fly it at B sides. No one was killed. But um, but I'm not going to do it here. Um, but basically using a, uh, a drone to deliver a wireless hacking drop kit onto the roof of the chicken coop, do my wireless hacking, and then take back off, and then, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, then, then we're good. We'll, we'll find out what the chickens are up to, hopefully. So um, a, 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 few, uh, a, a, a few things real quick. Um, uh, hacking uh, people that you don't have permission to hack into is illegal, of course. I, I feel like that's obvious, but I do want to go ahead and get out there. Um, my chickens did sign a waiver, so so it's cool in this instance, but um, but thought I'd bring that up. Um, also, uh, there's uh, if you do just drone stuff strictly for non-commercial hobby purposes, you don't need a license. Um, if you make money on flying your drone, let's say, yeah, if the chickens paid me, then you you may have to get a license potentially. So uh, I, I recommend getting a good lawyer, uh, which is what I did. So uh, just throwing that out there. Also, um, I, I think I think my example would be if you do this, you know, for personal stuff, you're hacking your own chicken coop. That's fine. If you were maybe going to do this as part of a pen test that you're doing where you're getting paid, you may need to explore getting getting a license potentially. So just just kind of throwing that out there. Would that so. be more of a coop test. It would be a coop test, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so we uh, kind of, kind of de design considerations as I was kind of thinking through the uh, the design of this and, and what I wanted it to do. Um, it, it it turns out that it's much more desirable to have the hacking kit be separate from the drone. I had initially tried to think of designs where I could kind of incorporate it all together. Um, you know, the DJI drone, uh, you know, Phantoms in particular, are pretty hackable. So I'd, I'd kind of gone that, down that road. But um, it is nice to kind of have a separate hacking kit because maybe I don't use a drone to deliver it. Maybe I have a robot chicken that walks into the coop and delivers it or you know who knows you know there's a, there's a lot of options so it's it's nice to kind of have them separate from a design perspective it's very nice because you can separate kind of the battery flight time from the computing flight time which is which is nice so um, the drop kit has to be as light as possible of course because we do need it to fly on the drone um, this particular drone says that it will handle about 1200 grams uh, of weight and still fly uh, readily um, my experience was that at around 600 grams things start to get a little wonky and especially on the battery life at the very end of it it's you know just barely hanging off the ground so you know four to five hundred seems to be kind of the, kind of the sweet spot for this stuff um, we want the cost to be as low as possible um, and I wanted it to be built from readily available parts there's definitely been other people who've done uh, kind of stuff in this space you know kind of with super customized drones and things like that um, I wanted to do this not with, I know for sure I could do this with a $1,000 drone. I wanted to do it with a sub $200 drone, you know, maybe something I could buy at Walmart. I didn't buy this one at Walmart, but, um, you know, uh, and also having it cheap is nice because uh, if the chickens capture our drone during uh, during things, you know, we're not out a whole, a whole ton of money. So, um, so yeah. Uh, and again, we want sufficient flight time to our attack target to land it, uh, get sufficient compute time while we're sitting on the roof of our chicken coop, and then enough uh, enough battery hopefully left to still take it back off. Or maybe we don't care about the drone because it's cheap enough to where we just we land it, do our thing, and then and then be done with it. Um, su su super low customization on this, hopefully too. So again, you know, go to Micro Center, go to Walmart, get the parts. We're we're good to go, hopefully. Um, 
some uh, some design problems that I ran into as, as I was kind of running through this stuff. Um, I, I kind of talked about this a bit. Definitely powering the drone and the hacking kit seemed uh, ended up being way too complicated. It was way easier to have separate battery for the drone versus the the hacking kit. Um, the uh, you 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 have to have your kit pretty well centered on the drone underneath, which which probably seems pretty obvious, but um, you know it, it does affect the, the the flight of the drone definitely, uh, especially if it hangs too low off the drone. I noticed as you fly, it will it will kind of tend to do this a bit. So um, I uh, mine's kind of just wired kind of right to the bottom where the feet are, which which seems to be pretty optimal for that. Um, some drones will actually go to sleep if you power them off for too long, at least the rotor. So uh, I would definitely bench test this before you go hack your chickens and make sure that your, your drone is going to wake back up after an extended compute time and be able to be able to take back off. Um, the uh, cheaper drones tend to be a uh, Wi-Fi range, which is maybe not as desirable. Uh, this one will fly so far away that you can't even see it, actually, which is pretty nice. And it's got a GPS thing so that when you start the drone up, it'll find GPS coordinates. You can take it off. If uh, if, if things go AWOL, you can shut the remote off and it'll actually come back and land kind of right where you took it off from, which is nice. But, um, but you know, you do need to be aware of kind of kind of signal constraints when you're when you're thinking about this stuff. Um, drones are noisy which is something to think about. So uh, you may want to do it when your chickens are asleep uh, so that, you know, they're, you know, they don't know what's going on. Uh, I, ideally, even if you're doing this against a real company, um, uh, for the wireless hacking stuff, a lot of times with the WPA2 stuff, you want to de-auth people, which in the morning is kind of a super uh, kind of optimal time is kind of people are coming in for the day, you know, catch people logging in and things. So, um, Drones also have lights on them, so you may need to think about, you know, uh, ta taping over some of the lights so it's not as, as visible as, as it's flying around. Um, the uh, the Raspberry Pi 3, which is actually my preferred kit, we'll, we'll talk a, a, a few things about different kits kind of that I tried, but the onboard wireless for the Pi does not do monitor mode really well, so you need an external antenna. I like the Alpha antennas a lot, um, which which are really good for this stuff, but just, just bringing that up. Um, the uh, I had initially thought about using USB modem, uh, and what what we do is we actually land it and then use uh, like the trusted sec tap uh, uh, thing to call back, and then you can be you know just from a computer just driving it just like you're sitting right in front of it, which is nice. But you need something to be able to come out over the cell network to to kind of call back home. The uh, uh, USB modems tend to draw a lot of power, so what I found was that it's actually better to use like a phone that you're tethered to because then the phone has its own battery also and kind of kind of extends the the time on this stuff. Um, and then uh, also something to think about is the way wireless uh, signals propagate. So uh, wireless goes really good this way. It doesn't go up and down really well. I'm sure you've experienced this if you've, uh, you have a multi-story home and you're trying to get wireless going in your house. It, that doesn't always work really well. So just something to think about uh, when you land, you may want to consider having the antenna be able to kind of tip this way so that you have good penetration into the building instead of trying to go this way potentially, d depending. Uh, my, my coop's not super big, so I, I didn't have a lot of these problems. But I I'm, I'm bringing it up in case, uh, 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 you know, in case you're doing this for real, potentially. Um, other, other uses for this uh, platform, uh, evil chickens may not be your primary concern. I mean, they're my concern. I can't imagine they're not your concern. But, you know, maybe it's evil monkeys. I, I, I don't know. You know, it, it, it could be a lot of stuff. Um, I, I think this could also be really uh, handy for like wireless site surveys because um, a lot of times when you're doing a, a wireless site survey, you, you kind of drive around the perimeter of the building maybe or you're, you're literally walking around inside with an antenna and things, whereas the drone gives you really good capability to kind of go hit the corners of the building, get a really good heat map going. Um, you can even kind of potentially programmatically do this periodically if you need to do like wireless reviews for PCI or something to where you could write some code, have it go out and, you know, programmatically kind of hit the building and things. Um, social engineering attacks where maybe you drop like a uh, pineapple, which is kind of one of the things I'll talk about, um, you know, to where you're trying to get people to connect to maybe your wireless access point and, you know, see what goes on things there. So that uh, that's a, a potential. And then um, I think it could be super handy for like data exfiltration on a pen test because a lot of people have DLP and things. Maybe you land on the roof. Uh, you you have access to the network already. You can ship things out over the cell network versus trying to ship it out the front door, out the firewalls, where probably DLP things are kind of looking at uh, looking at what's going out. So you know, data exfil I think is a potentially a really good uh, 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 use of this. Um, so so what what I decided to do is kind of science this a bit. Um, I will post my slides later so that everybody can kind of see what's going on. But basically, what I wanted to do is take every potential component that I had 
uh, and then have the weight. I have it in grams and ounces for Americans and then the entire rest of the world because, uh, you know, um, uh, and, then, and then kind of the cost. And then so basically what you can do is you can take this chart um, and then as, as we'll see kind of going forward here, you know, to taking different pieces of this and then basically what you can get is you can get a weight and you can get a cost for each uh, deployment option that you come up with. So, um, so this is kind of what, uh, what I came up with for this piece. Uh, so my first deployment option, which is actually my favorite and kind of what I ended up with, is basically a, a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, I got a, a 10,000 milliamp hour battery that I got off of uh, uh, Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, and then my, uh, my alpha card to do the actual sniffing and stuff. Um, I get, it's, it comes in a, around 348 grams, which is a super sweet spot for this stuff. It flies really well like this. Um, and I get around 12 hours of compute time like this. Um, when I originally was starting to research this, uh, I, uh, you know, I was just trying to think through batteries and stuff and I had a, a, a you know, a, a jump charger that somebody had given me and I plugged my Pi in and I thought if I get two hours out of this, I'll be, you know, pretty stoked and think this has, you know, legs. And I, I got about eight hours out of it and I was like, okay, this, this really has legs now, you know, especially because, you know, the Pi is low power consumption. You can do a ton of wireless hacking in eight to 12 hours. 12 hours is, should be ample to do whatever kind of damage you're going to do. You should be well into the chickens network by, by that time. So... <laughs> Um, the uh, ne Nexus 6 uh, running, uh, running Kali is actually a really nice option. Um, I did not go with that one specifically, but what's nice about it is the battery's built in, uh, the, uh, the, the cell, you know, piece of it is built into the device. Um, Kali runs really nicely on, on the Nexus devices. They're super hackable and easy to flash. And the, um, the weight is actually super low on this, about 182 grams. So that's a, that's a super nice option on that one too. Um, and then also a good one is p pairing the Pi 3 with a, uh, like a, like a Pineapple Nano. The, the, the Nanos are, are super small. Um, they'll do a lot of kind of normalist uh, wireless hacking stuff too, which is nice uh, on top of kind of the Pineapple attacks, which is cool. So that's a, that, that's a nice option also. Still, still pretty light. Um, and, uh, uh, when you pair it with the, uh, the Pi, and tap, you can actually uh, set up a SOX proxy, so you can actually hit the uh, the web interface for the the Nano over the SOX proxy, which is nice. So um, you know that that's kind of a cool option. Um, I tried, uh, well. In, in fairness, I tried three drone options with this. I originally, when I uh, submitted my talk and got accepted, uh, I went and pulled my drone out of the closet and it wouldn't fly. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of screwed here. So um, l luckily I have lots of nice friends and I had some people like literally donate drones to me for this to, to try out. Um, I tried the, the Parrot AR drone at first, which is like a $99 option for that specific one. It's not bad. Um, but it's, uh, uh, the, the flight was not super stable once I put some weight on it. So, uh, I, uh, uh, I upgraded to the DJI Phantom 1. They're up to like the Phantom 4 now. So those, the newer ones are much more expensive, but you can get one for around 189 bucks right now, which is not bad. Um, I got mine for free just because I have, again, nice friends. But uh, the, uh, the, the Phantom actually uh, flies phenomenal. It's super stable once you take it off. Um, if you're not touching the controls, it hovers really well, and it's really easy to maneuver uh, and land. I have video of me landing the, this whole rig on my chicken coop, which I'll, I'll, if, I, if I'm not too chatty, I'll get to here pretty quick. Um, the, uh, the software build out for this, uh, is pretty standard. Um, a lot of us as pen testers are pretty used to kind of the, the drop kit model now. Um, these drop kits are even handy for like if you have, uh, clients that you're working on that need internal pen testing and you, you don't necessarily want to be on site, you can ship them a Raspberry Pi, they plug it into their network, it'll call home and you can be remote, you know, remotely driving, uh, to, to do all this stuff. Um, I tried Kali Linux and Raspbian on my Pi. I actually settled on Raspbian, and the only reason was because for some reason Kali didn't like me because I had, you know, in my testing I'd unplug it and plug it back in a lot, and then the file system would get corrupt for some reason, and then I would, you know, I'm, I, it's headless, so I couldn't really mess with it. I had, had much better luck with Raspbian. I'm sure that's a tweakable thing, but I just, you know, again, customization. I'm trying to do as little customization as possible. Um, and then on the Pi, we put, you know, we can put Wi-Fi. We can put uh, Aircrack NG to do kind of normal wireless hacking stuff. Um, we can put CalPaddy on there to do some basic dictionary attacks. I definitely would recommend 
if as you get the hashes, you ship those back over the cell network and crack them on a much, you know, beefier rig. But that's kind of the nice part about the setup is that, you know, it'll, it'll call home and you can, uh, you can ship stuff back out. Um, Kismet's kind of my old favorite, uh, is for doing this stuff. I just like the way it looks and it's, it's handy. Um, again, we put tap on there to kind of do the, uh, the call home piece. So it's, it's all, we're just remotely driving from our laptop. I do re recommend using something like a, a screen or, or BYOBU to kind of, you know, maintain presence because, uh, sometimes the cell connection's a little fussy and it'll kind of kick you off. So it's nice to have a way to where you log back in and your session's kind of still right where you left it. Um, and I do, uh, I, I kind of got inspired from, from Got Milk on this, but I do highly recommend uh, for these kits, like having a script. So basically, you, you lay down like a, a, a base Kali uh, instance, and then you have a script that kind of builds all the other stuff for you. It's super nice, and that way it's super consistent every time you do it. Again, if the chickens capture your drone, it's going to be easy to rebuild a, rebuild another kit here. So. Um, so again, we, we, you know, we use a cellular modem for the remote access. Um, I do recommend using a wired connection between your phone and your Pi, just because, especially like if you get the pineapple in the mix and with all that wireless stuff going in really, really close proximity, it tends to kind of mess up the wireless signal between. So if you're, uh, I, I definitely would try and go with a wired connection there. Um, we use tap to call home. Uh, and then again, like I said, the, uh, the, the connections can kind of be fussy. So it's, it's good to use like a screen or, uh, BYO, I think that's pronounced booby is how you pronounce that BYOBU. I don't, I don't know, but, um, uh, some, some things that we kind of thought about as far as like, like future improvements to this. Um, I think, uh, uh, probably, uh, uh, my, my local STL set crew had, had tons of good input on this. I'd talked to everybody about it and, uh, that people brought up the solar thing, uh, uh, pretty often, which I think is a kind of an interesting thing. You could potentially land a solar kit with your battery, uh, potentially during the day, you could be topping off the battery, uh, um, you know, and, and I, I this is something I would actually kind of like to do for phase two, but kind of, you know, research, is it possible to get basically 24 hours compute time between battery and solar power and things like that, you know, could potentially live up there for a long time. You would want to weatherproof it way better than I did my, my rig here, uh, for sure. But, um, uh, GPS enabled flight is kind of handy for this. So if you can pin it on a map, um, and just have the drone go fly directly, that's kind of a nice option, especially if you're not a super good drone flyer like I am. I'm not, I'm actually not a really good drone flyer. Um, <laughs> and then there is, uh, uh, somebody, somebody brought up that there's, uh, these magnets now for drones, which actually let go when powered versus hang on when powered, like a normal electric magnet, which is, which is nice for low power consumption kinds of things because I don't need to use power to make it let go until I get to my spot, you know, you could uh, potentially kind of rig it to the GPIO stuff on your Pi to have it say, okay, I landed, let go, uh, keep the drop kit there, and then once you're done with your wireless hacking, maybe come back and pick it up later. I think that's a, that's a super nice option also. Um, so, so again, for the, the actual attack, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna do the attacks using, uh, you know, our, our wireless antenna. You know, we've got tons of, all your normal hacking options like you do with a normal wireless attack. You know, air crack. Um, uh, Wi-Fi is actually super nice because it kind of automates a lot of the basic stuff, which is, uh, which is really neat. Uh, it, it, it's got, it's, it's a super cool tool. So I, I recommend that one highly. Um, if, uh, if you're more of a glutton for punishment, you can kind of do it the manual way and, and de-auth everybody. But I, I recommend Wi-Fi for this stuff. Um, uh, uh, again, like I said before, we can use uh, the SOX proxy to get back to our, uh, 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 you know, our nano device if we're wanting to kind of go that direction with stuff. Um, and then any, any kind of data that we capture during the hack, we can ship back out over the cell network, whether it's hashes that we need to crack or if we've actually, you know, got, got data that we need to get out. Um, and you could even potentially wipe this remotely before you even take the drone back off. So you get done with your stuff. You can run a script to zero out your, uh, your flash card. Um, and basically there's no evidence of what, you know, what, what happened on there other than the fact that you probably registered your drone and the FAA is going to come find you. Probably not. They're not there. <laughs> um, so. Um, I have, uh, I have video. I don't think you'll be able to hear it really good. You, you gotta have the hat. It's, it's all about the hat, I'm telling you. And plus it, and the, the drone hits you in the eyes, so. This actually really is my chicken coop, I promise. Um, yeah. And there we go. 
So we landed it. So it, it does work, I promise. Um, Ed, uh, Ed B-Sides actually did fly this thing just to show everybody that it works, but it does uh, it does work. I, I didn't kill anyone at B-Sides, so yeah, it was good. Um, and I do have just another minute real quick. Let me see if I can... Uh, um, so, so this is actually kind of how the tap stuff works. You, it calls home, you secure a shell, basically it sets up a high port that you can get to, um, and you get in on a shell just as if you're like sitting right at the pie, which is super nice. Um, and then from there, you know, you can run all of your, you know, your Airmon stuff, your aircraft stuff, um, Wi-Fi again, I, I, I highly recommend. And so, um, so yeah, so that's, uh. That's kind of what I got. Yeah. Any uh, any any, any questions? Yeah. Left camera there. I I thought about the webcam. Yeah. That 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 would that would kind of violate my over engineering philosophy here. I I really wanted to kill this one. So. Um, but yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Zero as a possible I um I like the Pi Zero. Uh, it turns out that the the battery is is really the the heavy part, right? So um, my my Pi the Pi Three barely weighs anything compared to the the Pi Zero. Even with the case on it, it doesn't add a lot to it. Um, it's really all about the battery. So my my struggle was finding a, a battery that was light enough. Um, all the other components are, are, are pretty light, but yeah, I think the Pi Zero is nice, and, and you could, you know, probably get more compute time out of that. Once, once I got to 12 hours, I was pretty comfortable that that was that was long enough. But but yeah, I think it's a good option. Follow up question to that: uh, If you have looked at Pi, if you have looked at Pi Zero Ws by any chance, do you know if their Wi-Fi card has the same limitations as Pi Three? I don't. I don't know. I think that's a really good question. I, I would imagine they, they probably are. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I like. I, I really like. I think even if it did monitor mode, you're, you're going to find that having like an external alpha is better because the the antenna you get way better penetration with that thing. So yeah, yeah. Did somebody else have a? What's yeah. next for your project? Um. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'm thinking about evil monkeys for the next one probably. Um, I think uh, I really want to. I really want to kind of explore the solar thing. I think. Uh, I think it's interesting to kind of see if I could come up with a kit that 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 was solar powered that would that could basically live you know 24 hours and keep getting tapped off. So that that's kind of what I want to. I want to fuss with next. So. So yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, what about some sort of kill switch? So if somebody happened to get on the roof and find this and start trying to take it apart. So, so I, I, I think to your point, I think um, one of the things I've thought about even is it's cheap enough if I ne needed to go like ditch this in a lake afterwards. You know, that's not a bad option. Um, definitely you're remoted in. So, uh, so yeah, you could set up a script to basically wipe it, kind of like I was talking about. You get all done with your your hacking, you at least wipe th that part so that none of the evidence of what you've been doing is on the actual pod anymore so yeah yeah for sure I uh, the, the problem is, is it may be hard to detect if somebody's found it like if you're powering a camera to watch somebody the whole time that's gonna really cut into your your compute time so um, yeah but yeah so yeah hmm? So your setup as it is now doesn't have a cellular modem integrated in yet, correct? Uh, so I, I basically jump it off my phone, which which I like I, I like much better to be honest. It uh, the the phone's got its own battery, so I'm not killing the battery from from my Pi setup. Um, I I, uh, I literally the bag that the uh, the the battery came in, uh, and then I get twisty ties. I, I had to eat four loaves of bread to to get this manufactured basically because I had to have four twisty ties to Is do it. Your, your you know. Cost? Did you put that up on the cost slide? Uh, I didn't include it because it was included in the in the battery cost. I figure, <laughs> but yeah, I, I should have had the bread on there though. You're right. I'm kind of cheating. So yeah, add add four dollars to my my cost there. But um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I guess my question was, if you were to have a cellular modem, w would that put you over the weight that the drone could? So uh, the the actually I'll. Uh, um, uh, I'll, I'll publish my slides. The, the cellular modem is not super heavy. It was more of a it was more of a battery consideration with the cellular modem. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys.